we've got two of the most high profile black young England footballers really taking a lead now on big social issues. Marcus Rashford, obviously free school meals. Raheem Sterling, who's been very outspoken about a lot of things in the last year now saying it was in the Sunday Times last weekend. He's going to launch this foundation to help with education, to internships, to commerce for those who need it, particularly in the area that he grew up in, in North London, very near Wembley. I wonder how significant you think it is that those two figures in an era of Black Lives Matter and still in an, an era of a lot of uh, racial abuse on Twitter, how significant it is what these two young men are doing. Yeah, it's just massive. Like, um, obviously, there's there's not enough, there's not enough um, young black people growing up there and doing the stuff that they're doing, but it shows, it just shows that they're not just footballers, they're out there to make the world a better place. And it just shows, like, how, how society and football now are becoming one. Um, where footballers kind of just stuck to himself yeah. and they'll then only thing they're concentrating on is playing the next game and and winning the Premier League or having the best career as possible. Now out, they're now thinking about society, start thinking about making the world a better place, um, and that's that's what I think is amazing. And I think with especially Marcus Rashford, players, young players or experienced players, seeing him doing that, it'll give them the inspiration to think of other things that are close to their heart and maybe push those things but I think Matt Hancock at the start of lockdown told footballers they needed to do more they needed to step up and now you've got a footballer taking it to the government and kind of pushing pushing the pushing things where the government aren't obviously qualified to do so no hats off to Marcus Rashford but but Andros it's, it's really Sterling. significant isn't it that they're young black England footballers mm. doing this isn't it yeah, it's really important this yeah it's, it's very important because especially like nowadays there's so much there's so much going on in the world and so much negative press, not only for footballers, for, for black individuals um, in society. So when you see someone so young like Marcus Rashford taking on the government, pushing his causes of free school meals for, for kids in poverty, it's just it's inspirational. And like I said, there'll be more, there'll be youngsters now who in five, 10 years are the future, are 21, 22, and they'll see what Marcus Rashford's done. They'll take inspiration and they'll, they'll start thinking of their own initiatives and and yeah, it's definitely going to make the, is, the world a better it place. It's definitely, it's amazing. It's amazing that they are, it, they, it is young black people doing it. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, um, they're the first to do it. Yeah. And the fact that football's been going on for so long and th there's been such a divide between football and society for so long. And the first two people to do it are young and they're black with the division and with the racism and everything that's going on. They're for always and forever going to be remembered mm. as the first to do it. And the fact that they're young and the fact that they're black can start to hit people's minds and the people who are out there who are ignorant and starting to think mm. that black people are out there just to rob people, shoot people and mm. cause gun crime, stuff like that. The fact that they're out there and they're put, showing that they're trying to make the world a better place and they're making the society better and stopping everyone um, trying to stop young people from starving and help young young people to, into a better education and things like that, like that's what's that's what's that's what's quality about it. I think it, I think it, they're it empowers real, I think, a generation, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. I think yeah. they're real trailblazers. Whereas now it's two players. In ten years' time, we've broken down the wall so much that it will be just an, a norm for, for players, for footballers yeah. to have outside interests and for them to to push those outside interests. Whereas, like Mikel said, five ten years ago your top players, your Rio Ferdinand, Frank Lampard, Steven Gerrard, they weren't doing that stuff. They are only focusing on football because but they were that's do, they, all they know. To be fair, footballers have always done a lot charitably, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. Uh, in their areas or connected with their clubs. You know, I, I'm, I know every club has an association with a local hospital, doesn't it? Or a hospice or a community, you know, football in the community and so forth. But this is another step altogether, is it? Because it's away from, you know, what we do at West Ham or we do at Crystal Palace. This is a, this is a national thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, Everyone, everyone has their charity things. Like I've always had my, own, I've got my own soccer school, my own charity things. So, so I've got all those things. But the fact is, they're not just doing it in small, small minorities. They are doing it for the country. Basically, he's he's, he's trying to feed the country's hungry. Basically, so like that's what's the that's the massive thing about him. That's that's what's the massive difference mm. between. We're not talking about local areas we're talking about actual society that's what he's changing society the, the best part for me is tuesday he takes a campaign to the government about free school meals during half term 
Wednesday, he scores a winner against PSG. Oh, yeah. So it's yeah. perfect. For all those people that say stick to football, you're sure. a footballer, you don't know what you're talking about. Right, I can score the winner against PSG in the Champions League and I can do this stuff as well. So it's brilliant. Yeah, I can do the both. Mikael, how do you find them on a personal level when, you, when you've when you played with them and trained with them at England? I've, I've known Raheem for a long time, to be fair. And like, such a cool guy, man. Down to earth, like, lovely person. And, and so so is Marcus. Like, Marcus is so down to earth. Like, it's unbelievable. And he's, he's even though he's gotten to, he came onto the stage so young, he's so, he's like, age past his age. Like, he mm. just knows life. Um, and that's what's quality about him. I think he's just how he's been risen and stuff like that. It's just been amazing. And I think, with, especially with Raheem, he's been through, he's had all the negative press. He's taken so many beatings from the press. And it just came to a stage where he's just thought, enough is enough. I'm going to start fighting back. And since I think it was the, the 2016 Euros, ever since then, he's just been literally fighting back time after time. And now he's, he's taking it to a new level. And do you, uh, last one, as it were, on this subject, do you think this this can maybe alter people's perceptions in a country where they, a lot of people still need their perceptions altering? That's exactly what I was trying to get across, where basically because these two are young black men and they're out there trying to change society for itself, and it's not just society for the black people, not, it's society as, as a, a whole. Yeah. Um, people are not going to start looking at them and start believing that these young black men are not just out there to cause trouble, to rob people and stuff like that. They're out there to make society better. I remember when we were both in the, the England setup together, Southgate's first squad, and you kind of just said, just give me one just, cap. I just want one <laughs> cap and then I'll be a happy man. Is that still a name for you? I, to be fair, I'm at one that stage now yeah. where I'm like, you know what? I just want to concentrate on performing for my club. <laughs> that's, such, yeah. that's, such, that's such a typical answer. I've given that <laughs> answer for so many years. <laughs> no, but that's how actually I am. like, Because there was even a stage where you, I went, you know what? Because there was a stage where I really wanted to play international football. Mm. I was like, I want to play, I want to play, I yeah. want to play. And when I saw that I wouldn't really get an opportunity, I even thought about going to Jamaica. Really? Like, seriously, I almost mm. thought, I was like, I was this close to flying to Jamaica and go, you know what? I'm just going to play for Jamaica yeah. and get my caps in, play some international football. Jamaica's not made it to the World Cup in so long, so it would be a massive achievement if I go there and manage to help them to do that. Mm. But then I tore my hamstring again because this was last year. And then I tore my hamstring again, needed an up. And then I went, I can go to Jamaica and play and, and do this and do that. And know I can get into the squad week in, week yeah. out, and it won't really be a challenge for me. Yeah. Where the challenge will be in the international football, but it wouldn't really be a challenge for me to get in there. Um, and I said to myself, international breaks, the days off are mm. quite cool. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. As you get older. Yeah. As you get older, the, the days off, like, you kind of need. Yeah. Um, so I said, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my international breaks, play well, do what I can from the club, and if England come calling, then I'll I'll make my decision at the time. But I'm um, right now. All I'm thinking is club football. Do all I can, the best I can, as as it goes. And then if I get if I get a call up, then buzzing. 